Symbolic Markers Network, we would like to remind everybody that certain topics of discussion may not be comfortable for all listeners. Certain viewpoints may not reflect those of our partners, sponsors, affiliates, our hosts, or that of our guests. We would like to encourage everybody to keep a respectful and open climate of discussion for all topics, no matter how disturbing they may be. So viewer discretion is advised. It does not matter where you stand, nor what it is you feel is grand. Magic is all around. Magic is never gone. And it is more than you will ever know. And trust us. And trust her. For here you will find that the lost of magics have never disappeared. Hello guys and welcome to our Friday evening show. This is the Lost Magics with Sherry. I hope that you're all well. Lots of love, light and blessings. A big shout out to obviously my Bold and Bonker boys, to all of our sponsors, TV people and all of those that help us to get out there and obviously to all of our amazing family that come and support us every day in our shows. I hope that you're well. So today my show is another legend from Texas. This legend is a lady that a lot of people believe was wrongfully accused of murder. And there is a ghost story behind this as well. So I'm going to be doing that. I will talk to you about that in a little bit more detail in a minute. I will say that there is a lot of words in there that may be a little bit confusing. And because I am not Mexican, I may struggle to say them. But I will be putting the work out onto the Bold and Bonka main page on Facebook guys so that you can read it for yourself. So my show today is about a lady from San Patricio and her name is Capita Rogerson. But I'm just going to call her Capita because that's um, Chipita, sorry not Capita, Chipita because I don't really know how to say the other stuff to do with her and that guys so I'm going to be giving you the legend of that today so I hope that you're going to enjoy that it's a very interesting story again it was uh, something that I got the influence from my partner and um, he was saying why don't you know it'd be really good for you to do some Texas legend so I was looking and there was quite a few I came across but this one seemed to stick out to me quite a lot and I found it quite interesting. So we're going to be talking about that. Hope that you're all well. Hello to everybody that is tuning in and listening. I hope that you're all well. Lots of love, light and blessings. And to all of you on the different networks, because obviously you're not just on YouTube, you're all over on Facebook and all of the other places that we're at as well. And hello to all of you. Right, so I'm going to start reading to you about the legend of her and how she become alleged to have done murder. And I have got a few pictures and stuff that I would like to to show as well. So I will do that at the end as well. The legend is that she was hanged for murder. A lot of people believe that she was innocent, but there are some that say that she wasn't. So here we go. Corpus Christi. The worst example of hanging times was that of Chipita, the first woman legally executed in Texas. Some believed then and later she was innocent and her hanging was a legal lynching. Events leading to Chipita's execution happened in 1863. John Savage was on his way to Mexico with $600 in gold to buy horses for the conference on Sunday night, August 23rd, 1663. 
1863, he stopped at Chipper cabin where the San Patricio Road reached the Aras, Aranas River. A traveller could stop at Chipper's for a me- meal and sleep on her porch. Chipper, her real name, may have been Josepha, came to Texas as a girl before the revolution. Savage stayed the night at Chipper's. The next morning, a servant from John Welder's ranch was washing clothes in the Aranis River when she found a body in the bur- in a burlet bag. It was Savage. His head had been split open with an axe. That doesn't sound like a very nice way to go, does it? San Francisco Sheriff William Means found blood on Chipper's porch. She said it was chicken blood. Her handyman, June Silvera, of limited understanding, told the sheriff he helped Chipper dump the body in the river. The sheriff did not find a motive. It was not robbery. Savage, Savage's $600 in gold was in his saddlebag. Sheriff Me- Means arrested Chipper and Silvera and told them, um, took them to San Francisco where they were chained to a wall of the courthouse. The judge assigned to hear the case with Benjamin F. Neil, a lawyer and newspaper man who was the first mayor of Corpus Christi at the start of the war, Neil commanded a conference artillery company when direct judge John McKenney died. Neil was elected to fill the vacancy of the 14th district court. The court's full docket including the trial of June Silvera and Chipita Rodriguez. I'm so sorry guys I, I cannot say that name very well. The trial was irregular. Sheriff Means served on the grand jury that indicated Chipper for members of the trial jury were under indictment for felonies, including murder. The foreman was a friend of the sheriff. Chipper would not assist in her defence. It is said that um, Chipper, when she was put forward um, in the case, that she refused to have anybody to to stand for her, and she completely pleaded her innocence to to the point that she she made it very clear that she she hadn't killed Savage, and this obviously was not believed by the the courts due to the fact that there was blood found on the porch of her home where she was known to take in people that were travelling past and maybe going to other places. And as it said in the story, she would um, normally have people stop and have a meal and sleep overnight and that. The trial was the trial was irregular. Sheriff Means served on the ground jury that indicated that Chipotle for a member of the trial jury were under it. I think I've read that one. Yeah. The trial began on Friday morning, October the 9th, 1863. The jury brought back a verdict at noon. Silver was found guilty of second degree murder and Chipotle was found guilty of first degree murder. The first jury urged the court to show mercy for Chipotle. On account of her old age and the and the circumstantial evidence against her, Judge Neil sentenced Sil- Silvera to five years in prison and chose to ignore the plea for mercy. He sentenced Chipper to be hanged on November the thirteenth, eighteen sixty-three. 
it's very back in them days as well it would have been very hard for people to be able to prove their innocence normally if something was very much against them and um, there wasn't a lot of evidence to be able to prove them a lot of them would end up in execution even though her jury and the people that knew of her tried to plead for her to be you know lessened because of her age and things like that this this was not favored by the court case or by the judges sadly and like I said to this very day there are people that believe that she was innocent and that she was wrongfully killed and accused of this this crime when the day arrived judge Neil was gone and sheriff means was out in town John Gilpin the hangman was entrusted with carrying out the execution which normally was a responsibility of the sheriff. Gilpin borrowed a farm cart and team of oxen. Chipita sat on a wooden box of undressed planks for the short ride to the river, a thousand yards from the courthouse. She was wearing a white dress with blue trim, with a blue trim and a woman in town had fixed her hair. She was smoking a corn shuck cigarette. Corn shook cigarette. The wagon stopped at two mascot trees by the river. One of which was used for the occasion. A rope was fixed around Chippeter's neck and the sentence are read. A lash of the whip moved the oxen forward but Chipta was so slight and the oxen moved so slowly that the fall did not snap her neck it took some time for her to strangle to death an elderly man turned away and said it's a black day for Sam Prentricio she was buried in a plain box under the hanging tree so not only was she sentenced to being hanged but when they did hang her it didn't happen immediately she was hanging there for an a long time and she was slowly strangling to death which would mean that she would have been in a lot of pain and you can imagine the fear going through her you know hanging there and um slowly losing her life and her breath you know if you're going to do this sort of execution then you'd want it to be over as quick as possible wouldn't you really to be honest because it didn't snap her back so her neck so obviously it probably burnt her neck as well so she'd have had the rope marks and obviously the the breath of her was coming out of her slowly so she, she suffered through this um this situation which to me I can see why she would haunt the areas and still be around you know wrongfully accused is what is believed by many and she did plead her innocence on a number of occasions and then to go through that horrible death and did not go right that's not a nice way to go corpus christi had his own hanging tree years later this one was a lynching for though there were no questions of guilt on May the 15th 1866 Jim Gardner went into a store on Caperol to buy boots the st storekeeper was Emmanuel Skewer he was he and Gardner knew each other both served in the W.S. Shaw Conference Militar Company with Skewer a corporal and Gardner a private. Gardner tried on a pair of boots and was about to leave without paying for them when Skewer said he wouldn't give him credit. Gardner shot Skewer in the heart, killing him instantly. Skewer was laid out on his own counter 
The storekeeper was a respected me member of the community. Well, Gardner was a loafer who had killed a man in a saloon brawl when he was 16. He had killed several others since. Feel feelings were running high. John Fogg, who owned saloon and livery, took charge of the mod. He crossed Chaprell to Nozell's store at the northwest corner of Williams, William, and grabbed a long coil of rope. Gardner was dragged to nostrils where one end of the rope was thrown over the, the sign extending out from the store, but Mrs. Nostle shoot, shooed the mod away. They moved down to Caprill where Gardner, Gardner pleading gave me a trial, give me a trial, boys give me a trial, but they were intent on using the rope. They knew he was guilty as the devil himself and no prosecutor of trial lawyers were needed. They stopped at the mule house with fancy New Orleans style iron balcony on the second floor. Before they could loop the rope over the balcony, Margaret Muley ran them off, refusing to allow her home to be used for a lynching. The mod dragged Gardner down the block to the uh, Arayo, where they were a few stunted hackberry and muscute trees. One tree had a limb high enough for the job. The rope was thrown over the limb. Capt John Anderson, what, who was there, said a lot of us boys caught, caught hold of the rope down near the end. He kicked and kicked. The crowd was quiet. Everybody left pretty quick. Helen Chapman wrote in her diary a terrible tragedy just enchained. In, in, in An unoffending good citizen shot dead by a drunken loo, loofing. Scodrell, who had killed several men before, about 50 citizens carried the murderer to the edge of the town and hung him at once. W.S. Rankin said it was a terrible thing. I didn't sleep for a week. I couldn't shut my eyes without seeing that tongue st sticking out. The day after the hanging, Gardner's father came with a wagon to take away the body. He said he gained a good long stake rope by the operation. This is the second of six columns of hanging times in South Texas. Growing up in the so not only was Chipita hanged and hanged in a very horrible way obviously this this gentleman was hanged as well he was found guilty for the murder that he'd done uh, but again this this murder that happened and of the execution itself was a very horrible execution again and um this guy obviously suffered as well obviously he, he did do the the crime but still it would be better for you to be ended as quick as possible but this guy was obviously kicking around struggling some people remember seeing him like gasping for air and his tongue was sticking out it really would not be a very nice situation to to watch and back in them days they didn't really think of how to do the execution they would just put it over over a tree or over a piece of wood and um you would normally um, be stood on a bit of wood and they would just remove what's underneath you and you would drop and that would be it. But in some situations and cases, like in Texas, where there weren't very many places for um, doing the hanging, they would use such things as trees and that. And um, obviously, 
a lot of these people that endured this, they endured a very slow and painful death by the sounds of it, which I don't think anyone would want to go through. It doesn't matter if you're guilty or not, you know, the life should be ended pretty quickly. So if there are spirits of these people around, it can be very much understood why, you know, the deaths weren't pleasant. They were tormenting because obviously people were allowed to stand there and watch you be executed not to mention some of the things that some people would do like over here in England for instance when we, when people were hanged the, the crowd would be cheering sometimes they would have things thrown at them and stuff like that it, it was a very very horrible way to to be have your life ended for a crime because not only did you have to endure the hangings and the execution but you would be tormented by the crowd as well, which is really, really horrible. And I can see why they would come back and haunt. And obviously in Chipper's case, she pleaded that she was innocent and that she hadn't done this, this murder. So for her, she, you know, it's the fact that she had to live with the fact that she was wrongfully accused. Then she went for a very slow and painful death. And not to mention that, you know, there would have, there would have been people there to witness it and watch it. It's really not a nice uh, situation to be going through. Growing up in a small town border town in Texas, legends of the supernatural would circulate, giving life to entities that used to scare the life out of you. As a child, we all have heard of the Latusa the owl-like witch and how to curse it to scar it, scare it away. We have heard of the dancing devil, the man whose feet turned into hoofs or chicken feet. At a local dance club, we've heard of the horrifying story of the donkey lady bridge and the wailing woman herself, La Llorona. But while these are some of Texas's most popular folklore le legends, another story stands out as equal important because it reminds us of past injustices foisted upon innocent people. Joseph R. Rogers, also known as Chipita, was for many years thought to be the only woman in Texas ever executed by hanging. Many also believe that her hanging was unjust. And so for that reason, Chipita's suffering spirit continues to roam the cor Corpus Christi countryside. Reportedly born on December the 30th, 1799, Chipita, a native of, Me uh, native of Mexico, eventually settled with her father in the South Texas town of San Francisco, San Francisco. the huh? Hiberna of the western edge of Nuces country. Chipta ran a small inn along Cooton Road near the Aras River an inn where travellers could find a place to rest and eat. Sources say her illegitimate son, June Silver, helped her run the inn. In 1863, in August, a horse trader named John Savage was brutally murdered after visiting the inn. As the story goes, he had been carrying with him $600 worth of gold a small fortune in those days. And then not long after leaving the inn, his hacked up body was found down river at the bottom of the at the bottom of a burlip bag. Investigating authorities then revealed an axe from Chipper's front porch and also spotted blood Chipper protested that the axe was for splitting wood and that the blood from butchering chickens, but the sheriff and his men rem remained unconvinced. Legends say Chipta was an old lady in her 90s, but she 
was most likely in her 60s. The jewellery was made up of people pulled off of the street and it was a swift trial. Chipta did not speak in her defence and was charged with murder in the first degree by Judge Benjamin F. Neal, who also was their first mayor of Corpus Christi. She was protesting protesting someone else. All she ever said in the trial was not guilty, said Keith Guthrie, a San Francisco country historian. People said it was a illegitimate, her illegitimate son who actually did the axe work. Even though the jury pleaded for mercy, Judge Neil sentenced Chipeter to be hanged on Friday, November the 13th, 1863. Again, she repeated, no soy culpable, I am not guilty. Gerdin Magollon of Corpse Christi told the caller times in 1997, Chipotle was hung in my great grandmother's wedding dress. She didn't have a decent dress for her hanging, which was really pretty grisly and my great grandmother gave her wedding dress for her hanging. Imagine having to deal with the reality that you will be hanged knowing you are innocent. That had to have created emotional trauma for Chipeter, which may have unsettled her spirit. Some locals believe that because her body was not buried in a cemetery, instead she was buried beneath the Moscow tree near the Nusis River, that her spirit can find no peace. Some claim to have heard an actual moan rise from her coffin shortly after her hanging. Others report seeing a ghostly spectre with a noose still hanging around its neck, wandering aimlessly. Among the trees, or they say that they have heard eerie wailing from the bottom of the riverbanks. Let me just see what um, everyone's saying in the room so far. And give a hello to everyone as well. Hello, we've got Red Drum TV, hello. Anonymous Light, hello. Hello, Coffin. Uh, Squawk Radio. Crip Six, okay, we've got Coffin and Crip Six in the room. <laughs> Ghost Squad Scotland, hello. Sherea Five. Thank you for saying the awesome show. I really, really do apologise about my reading. I am dyslexic, guys, so I do really find it really hard to read words as it is. But when you're trying to read something that is of a foreign language, such as Mexican, as beautiful as their language and everything is, it's very hard for an English person to be able to read some of the words out. But as I said, I will be putting this out on the Bold and Bonkers page on facebook so that you guys can read it for yourself this is an interesting story for sure gonna be listening it is and it was in texas like um i would i just said to like to coffin that i wanted to have some really good stories to do with um ghosts but also a, a true story behind it and i i decided to look up and some go at some legends of texas and there were several and I will be doing the other ones as well because they sound really good as well. But this one really, really stood out for me for the fact that to a lot of people and from herself, she was saying she was innocent. And a lot of people believe that she was innocent as well. When the way that her death happened, which you can see very much so why her spirit would stay behind, you know, going through that torment, being accused wrongfully for the murder when she pleaded that she was innocent. And having that very long and drooling murder. Hello, Christine Johnson. How are you doing? Um, you know, she didn't just die straight away. She she suffered because they, they didn't carry it out properly, which is really, really horrible. 
And it's true what it was saying in that, in that status. So I haven't finished yet. But, you know, you can see why her, t- her soul is tormented and why she still stays around. You know, she was innocent. You know, the, the hanging was done wrong and she suffered for a long time. Um, I can see why people would be hearing her cries from distance. You know, I, I think I would be doing the same, to be quite honest. You know, it's an horrible way to die. And especially when you're innocent as well. Thank you. This is an interesting story for sure. Going to be listening. Damn axe to the head. Yeah, apparently the man's head was found parted. And um, he had been staying at Chipper's Lodge that obviously she came in to, uh, to have with her father. She actually moved down with her father and that. He run the lodge and obviously she probably took it on when he got too old. And there would be travellers from distance that would come in and um, stay there. Thank you, Dakota. That's very much appreciated, you know. And they would stay there after a long journey to get some food, to get some sleep and that. And, you know, these people would look after them and that. And this man, while staying there, Savage, while he stayed there, he was murdered. Now, it is believed that they believe that it was Chipper's son, but people didn't know that this, this young man was her son indeed. It was kept secret. Um but it's believed that he's the one that acts the man. Maybe something went on. There was a, um, a, you know, a fight or something, and he wanted the money. Maybe, and maybe Chipper uh, was trying to protect him. So she was saying, you know, it wasn't us and stuff like that, which put herself in a very vulnerable situation. And in fact, he got let off and got five years in prison, and she she was executed. You know, and. And he even testified against her as well, saying that he helped her to bury the body, which is really horrible as well, you know. Awesome shows. Thank you, Sh- Sharia. Is that your, how your name is? Very beautiful name, Sharia. That's very, very be- Almost the same as mine. Mine's Sherry, but Sharia, that's really pretty. Red Drum. To the gallows, yes, it was, but not quite to the gallows with this one. She was hanged from a tree uh, at a riverbank, which is awful. Ghost Squad Scotland. Hey, everyone. Hello. Hello, Crip6 with the big wave in hand. Talk about a headache. Oh, yeah, definitely. Most definitely. She did suffer big time. She did... um, you know, first, you know, the incident happens. Then she she goes through trial. There was obviously, by what it's saying, there was people put into the trial that shouldn't have been in, into the trial so that it was an unfair case, okay? So she had no chance. Then from doing that, then she was executed and the execution didn't go right. And she was hanging there for ages and ages, obviously, you know, choking and suffering. And she was rumoured to be in her 90s, but they believed that she was 60. Still an old woman, an old lady, and treated like that, and, and supposedly innocent. It was awful. You're two hours away from their light. Wow. Do you know what? That would be a very interesting place when I come back over to Texas. I don't know if you're up for it, uh, coughing and uh, light. Maybe we could make a journey down there. And we could go and do an investigation or something. What do you think, guys? Red drum, true. And we could maybe go live and stuff and try and get it live. Squawk Radio, howdy. Hello, how are you? What's up, bestie? Hello, bestie. How are you? Which one's bestie? Is that Squawk Radio? Hey. Caught a break from work interesting story thank you squawk radio if that is best to hello i hope that you're okay call break time and yeah it is interesting anonymous light hung and suffered especially if she was wrongfully accused no wonder her spirit haunts the areas it does exactly and i'm sorry but if that was me as well i i would have done that as well and being an old woman as well 
that it, it's awful. Hello, Mike. How are you, sweetheart? Exactly, an old an old lady, a grandma, and you know the the most horriblest thing about this story is the fact that the the guy that's supposed to be supposed to be her son spoke against her. You know, and uh, was okay to watch her go through that, knowing that she was innocent. And, you know, this guy was known to have murdered several people when he was in another job. He'd murdered other people and stuff. So you would think that they would look at it that it was more than likely to be him with her not having any any records or anything of being nasty or or doing anything bad you would think that they would look more towards him but they didn't they look more towards her which is very bizarre and like i said the trial itself was not legit they brought people off the street um so she didn't stand a chance some of the people that were actually like in the trial itself like the, the the judges and that they knew each other now in these days, when you go through trials and things like that, when you have got the representatives, like the people that represent the person that's done the crime, when you've got the, the lawyers and you've got the judges and that, they're never people that know each other because if they know each other, then it's easy to make a, make a, a convict on something and it not be legit. Okay, so you never use people that know each other in, in a court case. Okay, so this in itself was fast and um she you know she was strung up as they would say you know hello smith family my angels how are you mob mentally yep you was getting lonely oh mike don't be lonely you loved a lot You know, they don't normally, it's conflict of interest that you don't use the same people that know each other in, in court cases and stuff like that. So this was wrong from the beginning. And the fact that her uh, supposable son was OK to watch her go through that as well and only got five years. What, to go out and do it again? I can see exactly why she would be walking around and haunting everywhere and letting people know her anger and upset. I would do the same thing getting back to the story guys in 1985 state sen charles torren of corpus christi tried to recertify the situation by failing filing a resolution to absolve chipita rogers of murder and while the 69th texas legislature passed the resolution and gave Mark White signed the resolution on June the 13th, 1985. Chippeter's spirit may remain with us still. But some say her spirit only appears now when a woman faces execution in Texas. Others say it appears whenever any Texas woman is unjustly accused of murder. And I can absolutely understand why. You know, because she knows what that feels like. Um, while Josepha Chippeter's story may not be a well-known one, as other supernatural tales in Texas, it has had the distinction of being immortalised in several creative works. For instance, an epic poem by Rachel Lonenza, Shadow of the Nuces, as well as the separate poem Chipita by Teresa Palermo Escota, both celebrate her as a heroine in 1993. The University of Texas Music Department performed the opera Chipita Rogeres, composed by Texas A&M, Compass Christie Professor, Lawrence Weiner, El Caro, Carrie Cadena, a student, screenwriter and college graduate, 
of Del Mar College and Texas A&M University Corpus Christi wrote a screenplay about Rogerson in 2010. So there are many, many people that believe that she was innocent, as she said that she was, and they have they have done these things in honour of her and to remember her and to show that there are people out there that believe that she was innocent and believe her, her word and hoping that by doing this that it would maybe put her, her soul at rest but it doesn't put her soul at rest because as I've just read here she is said to haunt at times when women are being wrongfully accused of crime and are going to be executed or have been executed she turns up which I can completely understand and so Chipper's legend continues. Next time you make it out to Western Newcastle country near the old colony of San Patricio de Helbla, Helbrena, listen for her wailing signs. Part three, it's just a little bit of information about her and stuff, guys. Um, so Joseph Chipper was 63 years old, Mexican-American woman who lived in San Francisco in South Texas. She ran a short sort of motel on Nucius River, renting her porch out to sleep on and feeding weary travellers. One such traveller was a man named John Savage. His body, brutally murdered with an axe and stuffed in a burlap sack, was discovered in the river not too far from Chipeter's place. She and a man named June Silvera, who may have been her illegitimate son, was both arrested and indicated for murder. The evidence was purely circumstantial, with nothing at all to link the man to Rogerson's or Silvera's Sil or Silvera. She went on trial for the murder. She refused to testify on her own behalf, only saying that she was completely innocent. Some said that she was covering for Juna Silver, but it can be confirmed she was found guilty and sentenced to death on Friday, November the 13th, 1863. She was hung from a miscrewed tree in downtown Dallas, near the current location of the old Red Courthouse. Her last words were, no soy cul culpable, I am not guilty. In 1985, the Texas legislature passed a resolution stating that she had received a fair trial, but they did not post memorlessly pardon her. Pictures above. A few depositions of Chipta and how she died. A plaque dedicated to her, the old red courthouse where she was hung. The Nusis River, a mascot tree like the one used for her execution, and a map of Texas indicating where the crime occurred. Katina Sanchez, born and raised in Del Rio, Texas, currently resides in Corpus Christi, where she wears many hats when it comes to her career. Writing being on being one of them, she always has been intrigued by the paranormal and hopes to become more involved with the spooky side of life. So here we have this poor woman, 63 years old, wrongfully accused of murder, hanged. So, you know, her, her spirit, her tormented spirit, walks around wailing and crying and angry. And why would she not be? She was an old lady, you know, um... They say she was 63, but there is rumours that she may have been older in her 90s. So it's just such an awful, awful situation for her to have been in. And, you know, this story is not so known by a lot of people as some of the paranormal and story phenomenons and folklore. 
But this is one that I do feel needed to be out there more because I found it very interesting and very intriguing. And it's most definitely a case that I'd like to try and um, go and investigate and stuff, you know, um, not out of disrespect of her, but just because of what she went through and hoping that maybe um, I could do something to help with her uh, a soul at rest. Mate, that it probably isn't going to happen because in some situations when it comes to the supernatural and stuff like that, when certain circumstances have happened, spirits will not move on for the very reasons of what happened to them. So she may be one of these poor souls that will never move on because of how wrongfully she was treated. But I do feel that this story needed to be put out there because it's not so known in Texas, obviously, all around the world. And um, to me, this was a, this was a story that really struck my heart um, because of, you know, a poor old lady wrongfully accused of something she didn't do. And she could have been covering up for her son that was known in the past to have uh, murdered several people. So it's a very, very sad story and it, it's really horrible to think that her poor soul still wanders around seeking for justice. And um, there's, you know, when you look at it like that, there are many, many people that are put to prison over things that they haven't done and some of them in America being executed. I can't remember what the name of that film was, but he was one. That guy, that really big black guy that was um, accused of murdering those little girls, those white little girls, and he wasn't. He found them and he was executed. I can't remember what the name of it was. Um, he was a very caring man and very fragile man. And there was just no way that he would have been capable of murder by the way that he was. He was really big, really big hands. There's a film of it. It's got Tom Hanks in it. And... Um, he had this he had this mouse in prison that he would look after and it carried on living after he was he that's it green mile another story you know um wrongfully accused of murder because of his his color and the fact that he was at the scene at the time when the girls were murdered but he'd actually come across them and he felt so bad for them and he was trying to help them but because he was there and he had their blood on him, he was wrongfully accused. And I remember watching that film and um, being in tears because you could see that the guards at the end knew that he was innocent. And he helped one of the prison guards' wives that were very sick. He had abilities. And I remember just crying because of him being innocent. So it's, it's things like that that really stick out in your head. And it's the same with this poor lady, you know, 63 years old and just a, a normal citizen that provides for people that have been traveling for long hours and a man comes to stay with her ends up being murdered and because the blood is on her doorstep she she's accused of the murder you know and she and when she is hanged she's suffering she it didn't snap her neck she was hanging there gasping for air and you know imagine what was going through her head knowing that she was innocent and you know it it was tormenting enough knowing that she was going to be murdered and let alone be hanging there and not being able to look, make her life go quicker. It was slowly being dragged from her. You know, you imagine the pain and the things that that poor lady was going through. And um, it's stories like this that make spirits, guys, you know, and that's why some of these energies are around. If they're wrongfully accused or their, their deaths also go wrong, as well you can very much understand why they're around it's like i have a spirit that comes to me quite regularly and her name is dalla okay now she was wrongfully accused for murdering one of her friends okay and when she was killed she was actually drowned and then ha well, she was drowned in the water and that didn't work. So she then she was hanged. Yeah. And even that didn't work straight away. And a bit like what Chipta went through, it took her a while to die. Now, I've had communication with her where she's come through and she's talked about what's happened and that it, it wasn't her. And 
I said, why do you stay here? Why do you stay here? Why don't you just go to the light? The Lord and the higher divine powers will know that you're innocent. And she goes, because I didn't get justice. I will not move on till I get justice, until somebody puts my name out there and can prove that I am innocent. And, I'm, and I said, yeah, but who's going to be able to do that? There isn't anybody to do that. I've tried looking up on records for her and stuff as well, and I've not been able to find anything. This was a long, long time back, though. So, you know, for spirits like that, that you can't find any evidence on, and, you you know, you've got nobody around anymore that would be able to clarify what she was as a person, she'll never be at rest. And it, it, it really, really upsets me when you see this sort of thing go on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And there is a lot of unmarked graves and that all over the world. OK, those that are not so well known and not well off and those that have apparently done things they shouldn't have done. They were all put into unmarked um, graves and stuff, including the spirit that I've had communication with. And I, I've tried to find information on her to see if I can. Find, I can't find anything can. You know, she doesn't come to me all the time, but every now and again she will. And it, it, it just really, really hurts me. It really upsets me to see her go through that. And, and that's why when I read this story and I see it, I was like, oh, I really need to do this story because it's close to my heart. Not because I know Chipita, but I know an energy that's been through that as well, similar. And uh, it's a way to get it out there. I'm not saying it's going to help her to go over, but Della went through a, bit, a lot as well. And um, I can reason with them. And poor Chipita went through a lot. And it, it, it really makes my heart heavy, guys, when people are treated like that. And um, especially because of her age. She was old. In the area in Corpus where she haunts is pretty active. I'm I, I'm more than likely imagining that, but I would really, really love to be able to go to this place. Not out of disrespect of her, but because I have a lot of respect for her and with having my abilities and I communicate with many, many different spirits and uh, some of them have been through some really horrible stuff. I really do feel very passionate about the spirit world and about those that have been wrongfully accused or gone through wrong, horrible things. And it really does hold on my heart. And I wouldn't go to this place because I want to get big and I want people to think I'm amazing. I'm going out of respect. I would take flowers and um, some offerings to her as well. I would say that I'm sorry, you know, for you being wrongfully accused of of your crime. And I, I believe your words. I believe that you was innocent. Just, I, you know, I, I'm not saying it would help her, but it may. It may help her to have hear somebody say, I believe that you was innocent. I believe that you was innocent and you was wrongfully accused. I would. And that is the only reason I'd want to go there. How can an old lady that can barely move use an axe and smash the side of someone's head in? It would take force. Exactly like, exactly my point. That's what I'm saying, though. That This uh, court case was um, fastened. OK, they had people in it that shouldn't have been in it because they knew each other and they pulled people off the street that they didn't even know. You know, didn't even put them up to training so that they made the right verdict and stuff like that. This was a sham and this was wrong. And that poor lady suffered because of it. And um, that's why I've done this story, because it's very close to my heart because of the spirit that I talk to that's gone through that. And I've met up several other spirits that have gone through other things that are not nice. And um, I know that as a person myself, I wouldn't want to be wrongfully accused of something I haven't done either. And I wouldn't want to have to face that sort of death. And I, I do feel for them. And I, I'm just going to show you some pictures. Is there anyone that's up that can just get... What I'm going to do is share the uh, the pictures that I've got here. I should be able to do it this way, I'm sure. Um, 
it's actually the it's got the area where the murder was meant to have took place it's got a picture of her as well it's got the tree that was used to murder her because that is what happened to her she was murdered right so um let me get this up like this and then go over to here share the screen over to that Facebook and share it right so here this is the map of Texas now this area here is said to be where San Francisco country Texas this is where it said that the murder of Savage was supposed to have taken place this is where Chipper's home and hotel was and this is where it was said that he was murdered just here the next one is a picture of the tree that was used well or a tree that was like the one that was used to execute Chipita and it's near the river as well this is the river that um, the body of the man was found savage as well and this is the area where Chipita would have been executed I believe that this is the courthouse where they wrongfully accused Chipita of first degree murder Then you've got the beautiful area that surrounds where she was executed and where Savage's body was found. An absolutely beautiful and stunning area, but it is said to be very active. And somebody did say that in the room as well. Um, it's most definitely somewhere I would I would want to visit out of respect, as I said. Then here I was looking. I did really look like around to find. We've actually got an old um, report of her execution. Okay, so we got Chippita, November the 13th, 1863. Mrs. Odles, Mexican widow, and her son, Julian Silver, and she was also a widower, widower. She had lost her husband, okay? And her son, June, ran a, a small inn at San Pancheo, Texas, in 6, 1863. A Corpus Christi horse trader returning from San Antonio where he had sold some horses told the Confederate army stopped overnight at the inn a few days later his body wrapped in burlap, burlap was found floating in the river he had been hacked to death with an axe and as he was last seen at the inn Mrs Rogers and Silveran was arrested and charged with having killed him for the money that he was known to be carrying we first we first when first arrested both pro protested their innocence but at their trial they said nothing each eventually believing the other to be guilty the evidence was flimsy and circumstantial and the motive had been disproved before the trial when John Savage, when John Savage, the trader's saddle bags consisted of six hundred dollars, were found. Nothing less. Both were convicted, and Silver received a five-year sentence. His mother, in sp spite of the re recommendation of mercy by the jury, was sentenced to, to be hanged by the judge and she was publicly executed at San Francisco on November the 13th 1863 Old West Winter 1968 the curse that killed San Francisco town by Rule MacDonald page 32 so this is a document about the court case and what had happened to the man Savage that was murdered 
okay so this is actually a documented piece so then going on to here this next picture is actually a picture of her this is supposed to be a picture of her ghostly sighting that you would see under a tree and um the poor lady that's all i can say then the next one this is her picture of her being hanged you can see the rope her in, a, in the dress obviously there the dress looks black but apparently she was buried in a white dress but sometimes apparently she is seen in a black dress as well it really depends on the situation so it's either a white or a black dress that she will be seen in um but again a poor a poor woman that was wrongfully accused of murder was a widower and her son was quite happy to watch his mother be executed and even spoke against her by the sounds of it so uh, they were the pictures It is messed up, like, most definitely. And I wanted to put this story out. I know this, that, like, that picture is quite gruesome, the last one. and uh, But I do feel that her story needs to get out there. And I, I believe that her soul should be at rest. And if she was to go to the light, to the divine and the powers, and that they, they would know she was innocent. But she won't, because she wants in, she wants justice, obviously. That's why she wanders these, these grounds and whales and stuff you know she was wrongfully accused and she wants she wants justice and uh, i thought that I, w I would get these pictures i looked because i was looking for the pictures in the first place but then i came across a piece of documented writing about her case and uh, i showed coffin and he was like yeah yeah put that up with that as well and i was like i was going and like God rest her soul, the poor lady, you know, and, and a widower, you know, she lost her husband and more than likely in a war or a battle or something, you know. And I just wanted to give you guys um, a really good show again. Um, you know, I know these shows are quite morbid because they're about things that have happened and they're about spirit and that. But I, you know, when you're an investigator and you do this sort of work, it's not just about getting evidence of spirit existing and that. It's about telling the history and the story of those um, people and hopefully, for some cases, finding them justice. Obviously, for me, I don't think there's going to be very much we can do to um, to prove the innocence of her, but I believe in her word completely. And just to be able to go to that place and say to her, I believe your story. And I believe that you you didn't do this and that you was wrongfully trialled. You don't know what that might do. You know, she probably don't hear that from it. Even though there are people that have put stuff out in honour for her and stuff. You know. Dark history is very good to know. And it, like I said, when you're when you're an investigator and you're you're a you know, you, you do this sort of work. It's not all about getting the evidence that they exist and trying to get yourself up there and be the biggest it is about the stories behind these people and what's happened to them and why these things happen that is really important when you're an investigator it's not about you getting the evidence it's not about you being the best at what you do it's about you putting the stories out there and helping those souls to possibly be able to move on as well and putting their stories out there because all those years back she wasn't listened to okay and um that's what I'm trying to put out, that it's not just about the paranormal and the spooky side of it. There is a story behind every spirit you come across, OK? And their stories should be able to be heard. Um, I believe in that completely. So I hope that you did enjoy this show, guys. And thank you for listening. And next week... My show is going to be on the Mexican term of the bogeyman.
or the boogeyman, whatever you want to call him, okay? I'm going to be talking about him next week. Then I have seen a few other cases that were on the same page as what Chipper's one was that seemed quite interesting as well. So I will be doing a few, doing some research and to a few others. But next week is going to be the alternative behind the, the boogeyman, the Texas side of it. So make sure that you do tune in for that. Again, thank you to all of our TV people, our sponsors, our supporters, all of the people that put us out there on different networks and help us to continue to be able to do what we do. A big thank you to all of my angels in the ring for supporting my show and for coming in. Very much appreciate that. Love you all very, very much. I hope that you did enjoy the show and I hope that it's opened your eyes a little bit, guys, and made you realise that ghost hunting is not just about the spirits, it's about their past and the story that deserves to be told. So till next Friday, remember the Bold and Bonker boys are on Friday and sat, uh, Saturday and Sunday. I'm going to be doing some shows over the weekend as well, guys, so keep an eye out for me. I'm going to be doing a um, UFO watch thing tomorrow. Then on Friday, uh, Sunday, I'm going to be showing this show again on my YouTube on my YouTube channel for anyone that hasn't come in that's in my group that comes in. So you're more than have, um, welcome to come uh, in and, and sit that. Um, I've also got a video being put up tomorrow at 6 p.m., which is from a investigation and exorcism i done quite a few years back. My lovely man put the video together for me and spruced it up to make it look really cool. So don't miss that. That's 6 p.m. UK time tomorrow, guys. So there are going to be some shows. Obviously, the Bold and Bonker shows are at 10 p.m. UK time, Saturday and Sunday. So don't miss them. Look out for all of the other guys that are associated with the Bold and Bonker show as well, because um, I'm sure they'll have shows as well. But from me, until next time, be real, be true, be safe. Remember, enjoy your investigating, but remember the stories. And I'll see you all very soon. And a blessed be from me and a merry parting. And I'll see you very, very soon. <laughs>